Well, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone, depending where you are. Welcome to today's Future of Financial Information webinar. Uh, in particular, uh, thank you very much to today's speaker, Kai Li, for staying up uh, pretty late. He's, in, he's at Peking University, and actually that's where he's um, joining us from uh, today uh, to talk to about uh, the anatomy of uh, corporate uh, climate change disclosure and, uh, and climate risk. So uh, very timely topic in, in recent years and definitely in need of uh, research. Uh, and uh, thank you also to uh, Stefano Ramelli from the University of Zurich, um, who will discuss um, Kai's paper. Yeah, he's in the same time zone as, as myself uh, in Stockholm. So uh, that's much more uh, manageable. And uh, thank you, of course, to, uh, to everybody else uh, for joining the webinar. Um, just uh, some housekeeping information. So Kai will present for about 30 minutes and followed by Stefano's discussion of about uh, 15 minutes and uh, we'll use the residual time for questions from the audience. Um, but if you, have, if you get a question during the talk, uh, don't sit on it because uh, you may forget what you wanted to ask. Please put it in the chat. Uh, I will monitor the chat as the host and I'll make sure that uh, we get back to your question at the end. So now without uh, further ado, uh, Kai, please, the screen is yours for 30 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much again uh, for your nice introduction and for your inviting me to this very meaningful seminar series. So today I'm going to talk about um, a machine learning based anatomy of firm level climate risk exposure. This is joint work with Ting Yu, who is uh, currently a PhD student uh, jointly at HKUST and the uh, Southern University of Science and Technology in Shenzhen of China. Let me start from our motivation. As probably we all have the consensus that. Uh, the growing problems of the climate change has caused profound impacts on many aspects of our society. And a very important research question from the finance perspective is that we want to quantify the effects of climate change on firms' valuation. But in order to quantify and, uh, this effect and uh, achieve this mission, we need to have a measure, a direct measure of the firm level climate risk exposure. And this is exactly the starting point of our research. And just to briefly summarize what we have done, and then I'm going to uh, continue with our discussion, okay? So in this uh, work, we propose a new methodology to measure a text-based firm level climate risk exposure. Not only we uh, 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 give a measure of the climate risk exposure, but also we provide an anat uh, anatomy in, in the sense that we use unsupervised machine learning to decompose different aspects of the climate risk effect on firms. And, uh, uh, towards the very end, I'm also going to present that uh, we utilized our uh, measures, in particular, the measures classified by different aspects to uh, study a particular application to, in particular, we would like to study whether the climate disaster risk, which is a very important form of a physical uh, uh, impact of the climate change, whether this kind of risk is priced or not on the equity market. So let me start from the mm, motivation. In order to construct a measure of the firm level um, climate risk exposure, there are important challenges. One very important consideration is that uh, companies actually can be affected by climate change in many different ways. For instance, uh, we have already thought about uh, at least the following two categories of the impacts. For instance, 
physical risk. An example is supply chain disruptions and uh, asset damages caused by natural disasters. And uh, the other important type of uh, uh, impact is a so-called transitional in, uh, effect. For instance, risks and opportunities related to the transition into a low carbon economy. However, in our current literature, we have already had some existing measures, but these existing measures actually cannot be used to directly uh, and uh, very effectively tackle the challenge that the, the companies can be affected by the climate change in many different aspects. Not to say that we would like to differentiate these different aspects and quantify each and every of these aspects on term, in terms of the firm valuation. Let me just give you some examples in terms of the measures that we use in the literature. For instance, we have ESG score, right? And the ESG score actually is a pretty wide and a broad coverage, including emissions, including social and uh, governance and so on and so forth, right? It is not very clear about its relationship of the ESG score with respect to firms' climate risk exposure. Another example is carbon emission, right? Carbon emission um, uh, is considered as a measure of the firm to the climate risk. However, um, it is all, not always so, right? I can just simply give you an example. For instance, let's think about an insurance company, right? And this insurance company, um, uh, arguably that it will not uh, emit a lot of uh, uh, carbon, right? However, it does not imply that uh, this insurance company has low exposure to the climate risk. In particular, we know that uh, the insurance company actually will have very significant impact by natural disasters induced by climate risk. So using this insurance company example, we can show that actually there is also not a direct correspondence between carbon emission level and this firm's exposure to the climate risk. And in our current emerging literature, there are already some text-based measures, okay, which is closely related to ours. For instance, Lee et al.'s paper. However, for this paper, they focused on exclusively the physical risk. And then later, we also have a very important work by Sentinel and all. And the, so the, the methodology adopted in this paper is that uh, they use human prior and in the ad hoc manner to determine the aspects of the climate change and uh, therefore come up with a, seed, a, a set of the seed words. Our solution is different. So we would like to first construct a firm level climate risk exposure through natural language processing technology, te uh, techniques and by utilizing the earnings core transcript. So this uh, is uh, uh, similar to the previous text-based uh, measures. But additionally, we also have a extra advantage. The extra advantage is that uh, we want to not only come up with a comprehensive overall climate risk exposure measure, but also we would like to use unsupervised learning algorithm in order to let the machine learning to tell us what are the key important aspects that uh, the, uh, the uh, firms will be affected by the climate change. So let me summarize here. So essentially, we utilized the unsupervised topic modeling techniques in particular through LDA. And this methodology will automatically help us to extract different topics from the firm's discussions and track their proportion of each topic in real time from the earnings call uh, transcript. And this is a key motivation and the key contribution of our measure. So just to summarize our main findings, through our unsupervised topic modeling technique, what we extract from the conference call transcript can be summarized by the following five topics, technology, renewable, carbon, 
these three are related to the transitional risk. And the remaining two topics are regarding to disaster and the weather. And these two topics are related to the physical risk. And we show that our method can exhibit very large variations, both in terms of the procession of the firms, as well as in its time series. And of course, we come up with a set of time series measures of the climate risk exposure according to different five different topics for each firm. So this is a very comprehensive piece of information. And then right now, we are in a working progress to uh, work out a lot of applications with using our measure. One very important application is uh, that uh, uh, we find that uh, if we zoom in and look at uh, the disaster risk exposure of the firm, and uh, we provide evidence that firms with higher disaster exposures, actually they do uh, tend to earn higher expect return than those counterparts with low exposure. And this tells us that actually on the equity market, climate-induced disaster risk indeed is priced through the lens of processing of the stock return. And therefore, firms' disaster risk exposure will affect its valuation through affecting the cost of equity. So let me summarize the data that we use, and then I'm going to the details in terms of our methodology of the measurement. Actually, our data consists of several very important sources. First is the source of textual analysis about the text. So in, essentially, we have utilized two sources of textual information. First is from the Intergovernmental uh, Panel on Climate Change, IPCC reports in which it summarizes uh, drivers, impacts, and adaptions of the climate changes. And we use this piece of uh, reports to classify some seed words of the climate change. And the second piece of, empirical, uh, second piece of the data source is that the earnings conference call okay, from the Thomas and Reuters database. So we utilized the the earnings conference call discussions about the climate change related uh, uh, paragraphs, and we use it as a base for us to apply for our unsupervised topic modeling technique. And of course, we also combine the textual information into various other financial databases, including the CompuStat, uh, accounting variable database, uh, Greece per stock, stock returns, and also we conduct some validations for our database, uh, and our, in particular, our textual measure, right? For instance, we use realized disaster database, okay? And also we use carbon emission intensity database from two posts in order to provide some validation of our measures. So let me talk about our methodology in the next step. Essentially, it is a three-step procedure, okay? Step number one, step number two, and the step number three, okay? So the first step is that uh, we use LDA and apply it on IPCC reports to identify subcategories of the disaster change risks from the IPCC reports. And let the LDA, a kind of important unsupervised topic modeling technique to help us to determine what are the key important different topics contained in IPCC report. And it will also return us with the key words associated with each uh, topics, okay? And then we worried about that uh, maybe the terminologies used in IPCC will be different from the terminologies uh, used in earnings conference transcript. Therefore, we see comes from our second step, which is that we use uh, the methodology of word to vec And we try to use word to vec to find similar words as the keywords that we identified in each topic from step number one. 
to construct a more comprehensive and a complete word list for each and every key topics that we have identified. And then lastly, we apply LDA again on the conference transcript course to uh, identify firms' uh, intensity of discussing each topics. And here comes our firm level measures of the climate risk exposure according to different topics and at each point in time. So this is essentially a summary of our three step procedure. Okay, so, and uh, um, um, I understand that uh, uh, in our audience, some of the audience are very familiar with uh, uh, machine learning technique, but some of the audience may not familiar, that familiar with machine learning technique, but are very familiar with climate finance, right? So here, I just would like to briefly show and recap the each steps and provide some additional details uh, in a step-by-step -step, uh, procedure, right? So in our first step, essentially, we apply the LDA approach to the um, IPCC report. And the LDA is good at helping us to detect and classify important topics of the climate changes without ad hoc human priors. So this is a most important rationale for us to use this step. And the second step is that we use word to vec to try to find similar words uh, showed up in conference call as compared with the keywords that we identified from the IPCC. Essentially, from the word to vec it can give us a, a score which measures the similarity between the word that we identified from the IPCC with respect to the words uh, from the conference call transcript, which are potentially describing the same topics. So this step is to broaden and build a comprehensive keyword list for each topic so that we can apply it to our last step, which is that we apply the LDA on the conference call transcript directly one more time with the comprehensive topic specific keywords list that we generated from second step. And here, this is giving you a figure which shows you the uh, five topics. Okay, the first topic is related to emissions. The second topic is related to the technology. And the, uh, the third topic is related to the disaster. And uh, the last two topics on the second row, one is regarding to the climate, the other one is related to the renewables. Okay, and uh, let me give you, for each topic, let me give you uh, some anecdotal evidence, okay, which are those paragraphs that we identified to, uh, to uh, uh, particularly uh, talk about uh, each of the topic. Okay, let me start from two topics related to the physical risk. So first, uh, first one is uh, disaster risk. It uh, typically is related to the negative impact of a specific disasters, as I show you these uh, highlighted keywords. And the second topic is related to weather. Typically, it, uh, it uh, captures abnormal weather patterns okay, like extreme cold, warm, dry conditions. And on the example paragraphs, I also show you some of the related keywords. And the next, I would like to show you some examples of the three transitional risks, for instance, technology. So this technology actually particularly means those advanced technology on emission controls. So here I also give you some uh, highlighted keywords that we identified. And the next topic is about renewable, okay? It uh, means that to capture the firm's commitment to renewable investment, okay? And here again, we give you some keywords. The last one is regarding the carbon, okay? It is referring to discussions about the constraining carbon footprint, okay? Again, we give you some keywords. Okay, so now let me show you 
some uh, um, aggregate level time series according to each topics. Okay, on this figure, the uh, horizontal axis is the time from 2002 all the way to 2020. And the vertical axis is uh, denoting the uh, discussion intensity. And uh, we have uh, three uh, 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 curves here. So what I would like to emphasize is uh, the red, the blue curve is about our disaster exposure measure um, aggregated from the uh, firm uh, level. So this is like uh, an, the average disaster risk exposure among all the um, uh, firms. Okay, and the weather is the uh, average weather exposure among all the firms. And we, in particular, we would like to compare these two measures with respect to the physical risk measure constructed by Santana et al. in uh, their recent important work. Okay, so from the comparison of the figure, immediately we can see that actually their physical risk measure, exactly because of the fact that they didn't uh, differentiate it uh, from disaster and uh, and uh, the weather, and also they add a human um, a prior of the ad hoc keywords. Therefore, you see actually their physical risk measure in something at all's paper actually has a fairly significantly different patterns as our measures of the disaster and the weather. In particular, we also highlight some of the key events. And we, you, as you can see that actually corresponding to these key events, actually it can showcase that our disaster measure uh, actually captures disasters, in particular those significant disasters fairly well. And it is better than Santana's work from its first appearance. Okay, and uh, next, uh, let me also show you uh, the pattern regarding to the transitional risk. What I would like to say is that our transitional risk measure actually is pretty similar to the regulatory risk of the Santana at all's paper. And what we can see is that indeed, according to our, uh, consistent with our intuition that the transitional risk exposure uh, actually is growing over time, uh, reflecting our increasing concern and the awareness of uh, this issue. Okay, so this is also uh, uh, showing you uh, 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 the transitional risk measure together with some of the key events, okay, uh, and which is a validation test, okay. For the interest of time, I'm going to skip uh, the discussion. So next, uh, let me show you some validation tests further, okay. For, for instance, we regress our physical measures on some realized uh, disasters from the other database. And uh, what we can see is that indeed, uh, it has a significant loading. Our disaster measure has significant loadings on the realized disasters, okay? However, as a placebo test, if we regress our transitional risk on these realized disasters, actually, largely, it is not significant. And uh, we also, did the same thing for the transitional risk. For instance, we regress our physical risk measure and the transitional risk measure on carbon emission intensity measures at the firm level from the true cost. What we can see is that uh, largely physical risk measure, either disaster or weather, does not have too much strong uh, 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 exposure to the carbon emission. However, the transitional risk actually has a significant and a positive loadings with respect to the carbon uh, intensity measure from the true cost. Okay, so uh, um, towards the very end, let me talk about the two exercises in terms of the valuation, okay? The first exercise that we did is that uh, we want to see what is uh, the valuation implication of each and every topic on firms uh, 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 Tobin's Q, okay? Using Tobin's Q as a measure of the firm's valuation. So what I would like to highlight is first, let's focus on the weather and the disasters, these two physical risks. And what we find is that actually weather risk is not significantly priced. Uh, uh, however, the disaster risk is significantly negatively correlated with the firm's valuation. So this is consistent with our cross-sectional 
evidence that I'm going to show you next. Okay, so now let's move on to uh, to uh, the uh, three transitional risk. For instance, let's focus on the carbon. Okay, and uh, if we look at the carbon, we see that actually carbon emission indeed um, create a negative impact on firms' valuation. Okay, for the overall sample. And it is much more significant in the recent decade as compared with the early sample. So this is consistent with our, uh, our observation that the emission uh, awareness about the carbon emission actually becomes stronger in the written sample than the early sample. And then next, I also would like to talk about technology. What we find is that uh, the technologies uh, about uh, controlling the carbon emission actually have a positive implication on firms' value. And lastly, we would like to talk about the renewable. And we can see that the renewable actually has a negative uh, value implication. And uh, as we show uh, and uh, did some first analysis, we show that actually these negative relationships are mainly driven by those energy intensive industries, which has a negative exposure to the renewable technology. After we controlling for those energy intensive uh, industry is actually the remaining part of the firms, group of the firms, will have uh, insignificant impact on firm valuation, which is also consistent with our uh, prior. Okay, so lastly, uh, for the interest of time, let me use my last two minutes to show you a piece of evidence in terms of uh, the pricing of this specific topic of disaster risk. So essentially, with the uh, uh, firm level exposure to the disaster risk at each point in time so we can conduct a standard portfolio sorting exercise okay and in this low portfolio it is consisting groups of firms with lower disaster risk exposure while for this high portfolio it is a portfolio of firms with high disaster exposure and what we can see is that if we conduct a standard high minus low uh, 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 long short portfolio, we do see that uh, the high minus low long short portfolio delivers a significant uh, return spread on average, and this is 0.43% uh, uh, per month, and uh, which is going to amount to about 6%, 5-6% uh, on the annual basis, okay? And of course, we conduct some standard portfolio sorting exercises in terms of double sorting, in terms of firm characteristics, and also in terms of studying the impact of the disasters on the firm fundamentals and so on and so forth, which all support our argument and our conclusion that the disaster risk actually is having negative real impact on the firm and therefore it is negatively priced. Okay, but for the interest of time, let me skip this and let me arrive at our conclusion session. So what I would like to emphasize is that the key contribution of our paper is that we use unsupervised learning technique to uh, uh, provide an anatomy of the different aspect of the impact of the climate risk. And we find that our measures are meaningful and can be validated and also it generates potential fruitful implications in terms of whether the disaster risk is priced or not, and also generate some interesting findings in terms of the valuation implication uh, by different uh, exposures based on different topics. Okay, so let me stop here, and uh, I would like to uh, very much look forward to Stefano's discussion and also uh, our Q&A session. All right. Let me stop here. Yes. Thank you very much, Kai, for giving us this uh, very insightful anatomy of your research. And uh, indeed, um, now with the discussion is uh, Stefano Ramelli. So please, the screen is yours for 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mikael, for the invitation to, to this webinar. And thank you, Kai, for the very nice presentation. So I assume you can all see my 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 slides in full screen mode. That's that's good. Okay. Well, I really enjoyed reading this paper, so I'm very happy to have the opportunity to discuss it. Also, it's uh, close to my 
on uh, interest and I find the paper very, very well, uh, well, uh, well written. And uh, so you pre Kai presented the papers very well, very clearly, but I will follow the usual uh, um, use to briefly summarize the main, uh, the main contribution, the main parts of the paper. So as a main contribution, the paper proposed a new way to construct firm level climate risk exposure measures, applying natural language processing and unsupervised machine learning techniques, first on the IPCC reports uh, as a training uh, stage, and then apply this technique to earnings uh, called trans transcripts. And this machine learning approach identify in an un unsupervised way five topics. Three are related to the so-called transition risk, technology, carbon, and renewables, and two topics are related to climate physical risk, disasters, and weather. And there are, of course, other papers in the literature also looking at uh, uh, climate talks in uh, uh, earning calls. And let me just mention how uh, Kai and Ting Yu papers differ from these papers. So the Southern et al. decided not to use the IPCC reports as a training library, but instead they adopted a different machine learning approach. And recently also Michael and co-authors have another paper looking at climate talks in uh, early calls. And they also use the IPC, IPPC reports, but for a, different, uh, for a different purpose. I mean, they use it as a reference library to compute a textual similarity uh, measures. Next, uh, the paper uh, carry out some validation tests and shows that the topics that the machine learning approach identify uh, actually make sense in the sense that topics about physical climate risk positively correlates with actual realized uh, disaster, hurricane and so on and so forth in a firm's county in the last months. And also the topics about uh, climate transition risk somehow they relate to uh, meaningful firm level characteristics, particular carbon and renewables positively correlate with the CO2 emissions, while technology ne actually negatively correlates with scope one uh, CO2 emission. And finally, uh, they apply these measures uh, for an empirical exercise. In particular, they start by looking at the effect of the disaster risk exposure on firms' operational uh, performance and also uh, value. And this shows that disaster related discussions are significantly negatively related to sale growth and uh, profitability in the current and the next uh, quarter. And that firms that are more, dis that have more disaster related discussions tend to earn higher expected returns. Okay, and this holds even controlling for the usual risk factors. Okay, let me now move to my uh, discussion. So obviously this is a paper using machine learning uh, techniques and actually one of the main contribution of the paper is, in, is methodological. I mean, it's to apply these cutting edge uh, techniques to the climate finance literature. But I, my discussion will be a very low machine learning uh, base. Uh, partially because I'm not an expert in machine learnings, but secondly, I think more importantly, I think it's where uh, the paper perhaps need more uh, to be reinforced more on the uh, uh, more on the application of the the methodology the, the, met the methodology that is proposing. And in particular, I have just three consideration uh, suggestions that uh, hope uh, uh, that they can be useful to. To, to fuel the, the discussion. So let me start from the first one that I named the anatomic approach, the what versus why. So the paper at the moment proposed a specific anatomy, anatomical approach to the problem. And it's an approach that I call of what. So they try to, the paper tried to identify what uh, our manager and analyst talking about related to climate change in uh, 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 earning calls. And uh, the paper identify and they compose different climate related topics. There is also another possible approach, an anatomic approach that I think is a more an anatomy of why. So why are corporate managers and financial analysts talking about these climate related topics? Okay. And uh, my view, these climate talks that uh, are non-supervised machine learning identify in uh, earning calls are likely to reflect an undefined mix of risk exposures, so even risk realization. So managers may 
talk about climate risk because they are they are afraid of this risk or because they uh, one of these risks uh, just realize. But these talks can also reflect risk management activities. And obviously, uh, the the point is that the risk exposures is bad for firm value, okay, and also for for investors. But risk management talks, related talks, are good. So my point here is, my question for you is, can your approach somehow help disentangling also these the different wide channels and not just the, what the manager are talking about? And this to me seems a particularly interesting uh, question and say a more fundamental question than better categorizing uh, topics, okay? Because there are other papers uh, trying to categorize topics, but in my view, there is more space to say something more about the why managers are talking about uh, climate change. And I think you are already partially addressing this question when you, for instance, you mentioned that topics about transitional risk contain possibly richer implication for the firm's valuation. I interpret this sentence by suggesting that talks about transition risk may also relate more to uh, risk management uh, um, activities of, uh, of, uh, of corporate managers, which may have a positive impact on firm value. So I strongly encourage you to uh, deepen your analysis on this important point that I found very interesting. Okay, the second uh, point that I would like to, to touch briefly is the role of the temporal dimension in uh, climate talks. And here I make a conjecture. So I think that climate related talks are likely to be more frequent and also more important in firms that are more concerned about the long run uh, futures. For instance, we know from the existing literature that the investment horizon of institutional investors have a large influence of many corporate policies like R&D, CSR, even climate responsibility, and also how these policies are priced by financial markets. So maybe some potential dimension that you could uh, explore based on your measures is how do differences in investment horizons of investors influence the climate related discussion in uh, earnings scores? And relatedly, how these differences influence how climate talks are perceived by investors. So this, uh, I found it an interesting dimension that has not yet been uh, explored uh, in the literature and that you, you could potentially look at if you are interested. And here I propose a quick and dirty test that I perform. So here I just downloaded the South Net all uh, measures on uh, regulatory exposures. And, I, and this graph shows the evolution of these uh, regulatory risk measures for two categories of firms. Firms that are mostly owned by institutional investors with uh, a short horizon, short investment horizon. This is based on uh, uh, their portfolio turnover and firms mostly owned by investors with a long investment horizons. Okay, again, based on uh, their uh, turnover. I mean, as is usually done in the literature. And surprisingly, I, I saw that firms that are mostly owned by long horizon investors tend to talk more about regulatory risk. Okay, and this, I mean, it may be uh, surprising, but it makes sense because these firms, they talk about uh, more, about, uh, more about climate change because uh, climate risk are likely to, to affect them more than, than, uh, than for other firms more focus on the on the short terms uh, and this comes back i mean uh, come back come back to my previous points or trying to understand why uh, managers talk about climate risk okay so uh, the climate risk may be the same for both categories of firms but firms that are more long term they recognize this risk and they talk about it so that's that that's not that doesn't mean that they're necessarily more exposed to climate risk. It's just that they have a different perspective and they recognize uh, the risk. So I don't know, um, maybe you can uh, perform some uh, cross-sectional heterogeneity test uh, along investor uh, horizons. Okay, and I'll move to the last, uh, my last point that is more related to the empirical application that you, that you perform and you, you discuss. And uh, just to re briefly restate what you, you find, you find that firms in the top uh, portfolios of uh, disaster talks, in this graph, the red line, suffer a decrease in sale growth and profitability in the current quarter and the next quarter, 
And then you do an asset pricing test showing that firms with higher disaster exposure earn higher expected stock returns in the future. And my main consideration here is how should we interpret the statistically significance of your results here? Because obviously the null hypothesis, in my view, is not really zero because we already know that firms hit by disasters in car uh, losses. Okay, so that the, the, they were hit by a disaster, most likely, hence the profitability uh, goes down and also returns, uh, stock returns may, uh, may have a particular behavior. So you need to adjust for, uh, for I think, uh, for this fact. So my proposal here, try to adjust the statistics. So to consider as null hypothesis, not zero, but the coefficient based on some very elementary measure of uh, physical physical risk, uh, like uh, the shell to space uh, measures. Okay, this, I think I will find it interesting. And importantly, in my humble opinion, I, I will find particularly interesting the disaster related talks that are not following actual uh, disasters. Uh, why? Because these uh, cases, these special cases, will help you to disentangling uh, the cash flows and the discount rate channels of uh, stock returns. Of course, if a firm is hit by a disaster, uh, cash flows are affected and uh, stock returns um, may um, be affected as well. So this is a more, uh, in a sense, more direct and less surprising asset pricing implication. The more interesting one is probably the discount rate uh, channels, and, but to uh, investigate that, you need to control for actual, the occurrence of actual disasters. Uh, to sum up, I found the project uh, super interesting and the analysis already very well executed and the results uh, very uh, encouraging. Uh, I think there are lots of potential uh, for this paper and also different possible directions that you could take in the future. For instance, I like that in the conclusion, you say that you plan to establish a theoretical model about learning from disasters. And this is one of the many things you, you can do with, uh, uh, with uh, the, the framework you, you set up. Uh, and I think you still need to define the exact position in the literature beyond the methodological contribution. So there is a clear methodological contribution what you do, but uh, I would like to see a more, um, even a, a precise contribution on the economic uh, uh, questions, but I don't think would be would be difficult because there are many things you you can uh, you can do and you already do. So thank you very much, and I hope uh, my comments uh, are somehow useful. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Stefano, for for the great discussion. Um, Kai, would you like to take a minute or two to respond to? Uh, some of Stefano's points. Yeah, so I really appreciate Stefano's very insightful uh, co uh, comments. So I, on the one hand, I happy to see that actually uh, we too have the agreement and the consensus that this is a, a, a future area with a, a lot of potential in terms of the providing anatomy of the different aspect of the climate change. And uh, what I really learned from Stefano's discussion is that he pointed out uh, several very interesting further uh, directions that we can continue to follow up and uh, do research by utilizing our uh, current methodology and uh, further refining our current methodology. So all the points are very well taken. And uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Stefano. Thank you again, Kai and Stefano, for joining and contributing to the webinar series. Uh, it's been another uh, great event uh, that we've had and um, all the more encouraging given the Zoom fatigue that uh, many are suffering from after, after two years. Uh, so to those of you who need to jump off, uh, just a reminder that in two weeks we will have um, our next uh, event with Pablo Otonello and, and Marco Grotteria. So, changing topics again, but uh, still staying sort of at the forefront of uh, financial information. And uh, in exactly four weeks from now, uh, will, it will be time to kick off our annual uh, Future of Financial Information Conference, which is actually back in person, um, first time since 2019. So 
uh, if you're interested, head to our website, uh, footspin.info, and, and you can read all about it there and register as well. So with that, uh, I think it's a good uh, good time to conclude and um, uh, to, to once again show our appreciation to, to Kai and Stefano for um, joining the, the series. Uh, thank you very much, uh, both of you. It's been a pleasure to, uh, to have you here. Uh, and um, to everybody else, uh, thank you for joining and um, I hope to see you next time. <laughs>